Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to FX Maniac again and welcome to the part 3 of this uh, sort of hand modeling and rendering in Maya and Arnold. And uh, in the last two parts we've just modeled and textured and lit or lighted or whatever this uh, model. In this tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to add some water drops onto the surface of this object. So what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, I'm going to be using this uh, doing this using the end particles. So I'm going to go into effects and then go to end particles, select the object, and then go to end particles and emit from object. So it's basically going to emit the particles from the object, and you can choose the type emitter type. Uh, make sure to choose the surface so that the particles are emitting from the surface of this object. And I want to have like 500 particles per second or I can have like 500 is uh, pretty good. So I'm just going to create. And if I play this, you can see that um, we've created the particle. If I hit 4, you can see that they are emitting from the surface of this object. But the problem is we can't see them. And first things first, I don't want them to fall down. So you can see they're just falling down because of the gravity. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select the end particle, hit Control A, and go into Dynamic Properties and turn off, uh, actually turn on Ignore Solver Gravity. So if I play this now, you can see that they're just like moving. And that's because of the speed that they are having. If I go into the, where is my object? Um, here it is. So poly cylinder two. And then here we have an emitter. And inside the emitter we have some speed. So I'm just going to increase this to zero and the normal speed to zero. So now we have these objects. They're just, you know, being created, these particles actually. So I'm just hit seven again. And you can see that we, we can't see, uh, we actually can see these particles on the object. They are just being generated there, right? So I can go into the end particle. And if I want to see and visualize the particles, I can go into the shading and turn it into a sphere or spheres. Uh, you can see that they're there, but they're pretty big. So I'm going to go up to the particle size and make it like 0.1. Now they're, I think, okay. And if you want to randomize it, the way you can do it, you can go into the radius scale and just click a few points, just add a few random, you know, ups and downs here. So, but you can see it's not affecting the particles until you go into the radius scale input and change it to randomized ID. So now we have some random particles on the surface of that object. Now if I just play it, you can see that they're just getting born. So maybe at frame 100, I think that they're enough. So in order to make them, in order to turn them into a mesh and then, you know, apply the material and then render it, you need to go into the Sylvian particle first. Go into the modify, replace, uh, sorry, convert. Uh, end particle to polygons and as soon as you click that it's going to disappear but don't worry you can just come down to the output mesh and decrease the threshold until you can see those uh, particles uh, decrease the blobby mesh radius and the triangle size a lot more not like zero but just enough yeah, like this much. And then the mesh method, you can change it to quad so that it's a quad output or whatever. You can increase the iterations to make it more soft. But yeah, this is, I think this one is actually a lot more better than the usual sort of very uh, uniform spheres because this will actually look like realistic sort of uh, distorted water pieces and or pieces uh, or particles or whatever you know uh, this is actually looking a lot more better so if I can I, I can go into the end particle shape and then just play a bit more with the settings and maybe increase the levels and that's it so the thing is I'm going to control D this one 
and just hide all the other things. So now we have this object and just move it or whatever. There's no movement. We have just a single object that I can just apply the water material and it'll look pretty cool. So uh, this, this is a very simple method to create some water drops, some realistic looking ones. And then what I am going to do is that um, if I am going a little too fast for the particles and you're not getting anything, I've actually done uh, some tutorials on Maya in particles. This one is the basics, so it covers a lot of the features of Maya in particles. Make sure to watch this if you haven't got any idea about Maya in particles and then the portal effect. And I think I've done uh, Maya particles three or four tutorials on Maya particles. So uh, this is the main one, so the basics, and then this is sort of an advanced one, so yeah. And then I'm gonna go back to Maya, and then I'm going to select this. This is our like water drops. And then I'm just going to right click, uh, assign new material and shader, and AI standard. And if you have the presets, you can go into maybe like uh, clear water, just replace it. And you can see the water drops in the scene. They're actually looking really cool. So I can go ahead. And the other thing is you want to make sure and select the object and go into the water drop shape. Arnold, make sure opaque is off so you can render it out with transparency. And I am going to render this and see how it looks. All right, so the render is done and you can see it's looking pretty cool. And uh, the cool thing about it is that uh, we have some uh, random looking water pieces. It's a lot more better than you know just using the uniform spheres in the end particle. So that's what it's giving you like these uh, this cool looking uh, uh, random shapes, uh, you know, when you convert the end particles to the mesh. So yeah, and water is actually very dependent on the environment. So it's reflecting and refracting the light off of the environment. So yeah, that's the thing. And then you can you can turn off like cast shadows, and that typically would help, you know, because they don't need to cast shadows, you know, because they're just water. They're transparent. So maybe uh, I'm just going to render this one more time and see if it, that is like doing any, making any difference. So just pause the video and I'll be back when this is done. All right, so the render is done and uh, I think turning off the cast shadow didn't seem to be doing, uh, to be making uh, a lot of difference. So that's, that's the thing. Uh, that's probably okay for this. And you can you can go ahead and you know like save this image again to anywhere that you want, you know, and uh, that is it actually. You know, very quickly we've added some some really cool realistic looking particles, and added a material, and that wraps up the soda can modeling, texturing, lighting, and like water condes condens or whatever you call it, like the water particles and drops uh, of this uh, object. So I hope you guys liked it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And most importantly, I hope you guys learned something from it. And uh, if you have any questions on this, anything that you've missed from the three parts, make sure to go to my channel, Effects Maniac, and you know, comment, uh, share them in the comment section below. And uh, do like the videos because it's going to show up in the YouTube's recommendations and a lot more people can watch it and, you know, um, use it. So, uh, and that will certainly help me uh, to continue creating these tutorials for you guys. And finally, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure to subscribe and turn on the bell icon to get notified whenever I upload a new tutorial. So thank you again. And as I always say, Till next time, enjoy working.